So earlier we said that a second way to define entropy was by counting the number of ways in which particles can be arranged. So that's what we're going to be looking at now. In this case we're going to be relating the microscopic state, so that's the arrangement of individual particles, to the macroscopic states. So we've done this previously for pressure, volume and temperature where we were looking at the collisions of individual atoms and molecules with the wall of a container. So for entropy this is just going to be a brief introduction to this. We'll show the equations rather than derive all of them. There is a whole branch of physics known as statistical mechanics where this is looked at in a lot more detail. So to start with, we're going to consider a box. We're going to divide our box in half so that we know which molecules are in which half. And we'll be looking at the probability of the particles arranging themselves in different configurations. Now what we want to do is work out well how could we distribute n particles between two boxes. So we'd put n1 in box 1 and n2 in box 2 to give us our total number capital N. Okay so n can be anything but we're going to start with an example. So we're going to start with n equals 6. We'll look at the different ways that we can arrange six particles between two box. Now these particles are all indistinguishable. We can't tell the difference between one particle and another particle. Okay, so first of all, we could imagine putting six particles into this first box here. So let's draw those six particles there. Okay, now we'll be counting up our conf configurations as we go. So this is configuration 1 in which n1 is equal to 6 and n2 is equal to 0. And we want to know, well, how many ways can we do this? And it turns out that there's only one way that we can do this. The only way to do it is to put every single one of the six particles here and absolutely none of the two particles here. So in this case, the number of ways we can do this is equal to one. Okay, so we're actually going to call the number of ways we can do it at the multiplicity. And give it the symbol W. Okay, now our second state. In our second state, we shall move one of these particles from box one into box two. And now it becomes a little bit harder. Okay, so this is state two. In this case, M1 is equal to five and N2 is equal to one. And we want to know, well, how many ways can we do that? Well, we can choose which particle goes in box two. And there's six different ways that we can choose that particle because there's six particles here to choose between. And once we've chosen that, then all the other states are fixed. So this is actually just six because there's six ways that we can choose this one particle. Okay, so let's look at configuration three. In configuration three, we move an additional one of these particles over here. And for configuration three, we've got N1 is equal to four and N2 is equal to two. And we want to work out how many ways we can do that. Well, we can choose this top particle in six ways. Once we've chosen this top particle, there's only five particles left. So we can choose the second particle in this box in five different ways. But then once we've chosen these two particles, because they're indistinguishable, it doesn't matter which way we order them. So we divide by two factorial 
which is just 2 in this case. So this is equal to 6 times 5 divided by 2, 30 divided by 2, that's 15. So there's 15 different ways that we can do configuration 3. Okay, let's look at configuration 4. So in this case, we are going to move another one of these particles over here. So now we've got three particles in each box. And so N1 is equal to 3, N2 is equal to 3. Okay, so we can choose the first particle in six ways. We can choose the second particle in five ways because there's five particles left in this box to choose from. And then we could choose this third particle in four ways because there was four particles left. But once we've chosen these particles, the order that we chose them in doesn't matter because they are indistinguishable. So we get rid of all the different orderings of these, which is 3 factorial. And so this is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 over 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So that gives us 20 configurations. Okay, and now we've got number 5, in which case N1 is equal to 2 and N2 is equal to 4. Okay, so in that case, let's draw that here. Now, hopefully you can see that there's a relationship between state 5, sorry, configuration 5 and configuration 3. And they've, we've got the same number of particles in the two different boxes. In this case, it was 2 and 4. And in the, the other case, it was 4 and 2. So the number of ways that we can organize those is going to be the same. So this will be 15 again through exactly the same arguments. Now, configuration 6 will be n1 is equal to 1 and n2 is equal to 5. So... If we want to draw it, it looks like this, and that is going to have the same number of configurations as state 2, so 6, and finally configuration 7, in which n1 is equal to 0 and n2 is equal to 6, and once again there's only one possible way that we can do that, so that configuration looks like this. Okay, so now I've done that for n equals 6, which was possible for 6 because it's not an especially big number and we could visualize what each of these combinations would look like. But what about for capital N where capital N is a big number? Well, you might have seen the basic pattern that we were using to calculate the multiplicity for each of these different configurations. So, to get the multiplicity of a certain configuration, what we did was we worked out how many ways we could choose the particles in the second box. And that turned out to be n factorial divided by the factorial of the number of particles left in box one. So for example, for configuration four here, n factorial, that's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then we divide by the number which was left here, which was the 3 times 2 times 1. And then what we did was we divided by the number of ways that we could order the particles in the second box. So we divided by this 3 factorial, which was the number in the second box factorial. So we divide by n2 factorial. So this gives us a way to calculate the multiplicity of states. So remember that's multiplicity of states for any number n. So let's just show that it works for this fourth combination. So w4 we would have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over, we had 3 in here and 3 in here. So that's 3 times 2 times 1 
times 3 times 2 times 1. You can see this cancels with that. And so we do end up with 20 as before. Now, each of these states is known as a microstate. So we've got 15 different microstates, which is 15 different ways of arranging the particles with four particles in the first box and two particles in the second box. Now, a useful way to use that is to work out the probability of certain different configurations. So in order to do that, what we need to do is count up the total number of configurations. So in this case, the total number of configurations is 1 plus 6 plus 15 plus 20 plus 15 plus 6 plus 1. So that turns out to be 64. So the probability of finding the particles in this first configuration, we assume that each of these microstates is equally probable. So this is 1 over 64. With configuration 2, there's 6 different microstates with that configuration, so it's 6 over 64. With configuration 3, there's 15 particles with, sorry, 15 different microstates with that configuration, so it's, it's 15 over 64, etc. Okay, so let's try a problem with this now. Okay, so let's try the problem. Suppose you have a hundred indistinguishable particles. You distri distribute them between two boxes. How many microstates have the configuration n1 equals 50, n2 equals 50? How many have the configuration n1 equals 100, n2 equals 0? What does this tell you about the probability? What does this tell us about the probabilities of these configurations? Okay, so we'll start with the 50-50. We want to calculate the multiplicity of configurations, which is n factorial over n1 factorial, n2 factorial. Okay, now this might be hard to do on your calculator. You might need to resort to Excel or something because these numbers are starting to get a bit big. Okay, so in this case, we've got 100 particles. So capital N is equal to 100. So this is 100 factorial over we've got 50 in each of these states so this is 50 factorial times 50 factorial now when we find those this is equal to 9.33 times 10 to the power of 157 an absolutely enormous number divided by 3.04 times 10 to the 64 times 3.04 times 10 to the 64. And solving that, we end up with 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 29. So there are an awful lot of microstates with this configuration. Let's look at this other configuration. N factorial over N1 factorial, N2 factorial. But in this case, we've got 100 factorial. In N1, we've got 100 factorial, and in N2, we've got 0 factorial. Now, 0 factorial is actually 1, so otherwise we'd be dividing by 0, and we'd have problems here, but we don't have problems because if you check 0 factorial on your calculator, it is 1. So this is 1, and we're dividing by 100 factorial by 100 factorial, so in total, that's equal to 1. So there's only one way that we can get this configuration. So what does this tell us about the probabilities of these configurations? So this tells us that it is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 29 times more likely that we will have the particles distributed 50 in each box than 100 in one box and zero in the other. So the implications for this are if you imagine if you had one mole of molecules, which is an enormous number of molecules, imagine what's going to happen to these factorials here. So this is like we were saying before, it's, uh, it's highly, highly unlikely that all the particles are suddenly going to find themselves on one half of a room. So now we've got the mathematics to be able to calculate that. In this case, if we try doing it on the calculator, the, the numbers are just so enormous, it's completely mind boggling. So in the lifetime of our universe, well, it's highly unlikely that we'd have time for it to reach the state with half of those molecules on one side of the room and none on the other half.